Hello, welcome to the Center for Indigenous Theatre's program information session. My name is Mike and I am the office manager at CIT. Just an overview of what we are going to be talking about today. We will be speaking about the history of CIT, the program and outline of the upcoming school year, as well as our health and safety protocols. We will also run you through the application and ongoing enrollment requirements. Throughout the duration of our info session, our students will be showcasing their skills. Also, we were able to sit down with our alumni, Christopher Majaki, and talk to him about his time as a student at the Centre for Indigenous Theatre. Tanze Tawio, Kitsune Nitsigasen, Nea Nehio. My name is Kitsune. I am the offspring of a residential school survivor. Many of the students here have similar stories where their parents, grandparents, and great grandparents went to residential schools, where our culture, our language, and identity was stripped from us. Our practice is forbidden. Today I'm here to give thanks by doing a land acknowledgement and thanking the caretakers that came before us. But instead of doing a specific acknowledgement, I put down some tobacco today for you to have a safe journey and to enjoy the show. If you'd like to know whose land you're currently occupying, check out these two resources here. So whether you're here in Ontario, in Toronto like the students, or nationwide, giving thanks to those who came before us means that we are giving thanks to our ancestors and the many generations who came before us today. Hi, my name's Kiana Garcia and I'm the Health and Safety and Office Assistant here at CIT. CIT was founded by James Buller and was originally a six-week program called Native Theatre School. The Native Theatre School was then renamed Center for Indigenous Theatre in 1994. We went on to become a full-time program in 1999. We then expanded to a three-year program in 2002 and then added a fourth year in 2018. CIT is a post-secondary program that provides training in acting, voice, and movement. We also offer cultural classes that are focused on dance, song, and oral history. We have partnerships across Canada that we are able to utilize throughout the year. Our students are able to participate in land-based teachings with the Bajmajig Storytellers in Manitowaning and in Onmatogsi and Nipissing First Nation. Now it's time for our first student video. Fourth year student Teresa Cutknife has created a six part series. Have a look at part three. Hello? Hi. <laughs> I'm, I'm good. Uh, we just left Winnipeg and gonna be in Alberta in about eight hours or so, depending. No, yeah, the drive's been good. Um, first we were in, in Sault Ste. Marie, stayed the night traveling from Toronto and from Sault Ste. Marie to Winnipeg. And now we're in that last home stretch. Yeah, a lot of driving, but it's all worth it. <laughs> or at least I think so. Um, yeah, it's weird, like move, traveling west, you can almost like feel a shift in like the way people are operating. Some of the places that we've stopped, like for gas and things like that, it almost seems like regulations are less, not as many people are wearing masks and things like that. So it kind of just makes me wonder about what it'll be like when we get to Edmonton. Yeah, I have to quarantine. I'll be in Edmonton for two weeks. But after that, I would love to see you. I would love to hang out. <laughs> Okay, well, I'll message you when I get there. Okay, love you, bye.
I really enjoyed that. What do you think about her series? I think it's amazing. I enjoyed watching it during our December showcase and I am excited to watch that COVID-19 diary and the other COVID-19 diaries that our students have created. Now we're going to talk about the outline of the upcoming year. The next cohort of first year students will begin school in September. They will begin with an orientation period of exploring CIT and Toronto. Students will then enter full-time training with a winter break in between their studies. Our first years will then continue training from January to May, leading up to graduation. Due to COVID-19, special protocol has been put into place. This includes, but not limited to, mandatory social distancing and facial coverings, as well as sanitization and screening before entering CIT studios. The health and safety of our students, faculty, and staff members are of the utmost importance. Here are two versions of what your class schedule might look like this upcoming school year. As you can see, one schedule includes 100% in-person training and the other schedule includes a mixture of 60% online training and 40% in-person training. As our current health and safety regulations continue to develop, your training may be influenced by COVID-19. You have a variety of classes at CIT, including dance, voice, physical theater, singing, and story creation. It's now time for our interview with Chris. We were able to sit down with Chris and ask him about his time at CIT. What career have you been able to pursue while since graduating from CIT? Well, after I graduated from CIT, I got accepted into another theater program, uh, the acting program at the National Theater School of Canada, which is located in Montreal, Quebec. So I had the great fortune of doing that program. Uh, I graduated in 2018. So since then, I moved back to Toronto and I've been slowly building and starting a career in the arts. Um, I've done it as an actor, I've done it as somebody uh, who's worked in movement and dance. I've done it with uh, myself merging as a playwright. I've also done uh, voice work for books on audio and um, a little bit of film and television too. I've done uh, quite a few non-union gigs and I've done uh, one union commercial and then I've done a, a few non-union TV film stuff and then one um, uh, union uh, feature film. So I, I've, I've been pretty fortunate and very grateful, very lucky, very hard work, just, just sort of everything kind of lined up the way it did um, after graduating CIT. Uh, so I, I, I feel like I've done pretty good. I've, I've, I've done well. I'm not doing the most amazing and I'm not like falling behind. I feel like I'm exactly where I should be. And even during this whole pandemic, uh, I've been given the tools by CIT, by NTS, all of my training coming together and just the life that I've lived and the character and just the experiences that I have, um, have just blessed me with this ability and these skills and this sort of heart, this, it just gave me everything. So I go, what do I want to do in life? I mean, it took me a while to find it, but when I eventually found the arts, theater, Whew, I love it. Storytelling. I mean, it's a part of our people, right? Our people, it's, it's an oral culture. We share things orally. We talk, you know, we get into a circle and we talk and there's no, nobody's writing stuff down. Who's writing stuff down? Hey, hey, crazy foot. Hey, get that birch bark out of here. Get it out. You know, we don't write this stuff down. Yeah. Anyway, we just, that's what we do, right? We share, we get into a circle, we talk to each other, we take in the energy and then we carry it until we're ready to pass it and share it again so because our people are storytellers i just feel like it was something i've always had in my life this like oh, i want to tell a story like this experience i had oh this person's telling a story everybody gather around the campfire like let's listen to grandma whoever it is so i i, I love storytelling and at cit it gave me the base and the foundation for storytelling Thank you, Chris. We appreciate your time. That interview was very entertaining. Now it's time for our first year student, River Waterhen, to perform a dance piece. Take a look.
Now here are the requirements in order to apply for the Center for Indigenous Theater. You must identify as First Nations, Métis, or Inuit. You must be 18 years of age or older. You need to have a grade 10 English level or higher. Have an interest in acting, movement, voice, self-discovery, and theater, as well as an interest in exploring Indigenous knowledge. An updated resume, a 500-word essay expressing your interest in theater and coming to CIT, two references that can vouch for your interest in theater, a photocopy of your health card, and an audition video of you doing some script work. To make things easier, we've created a video on how to do an audition at CIT. Take a look. Hi, I'm Sam Twin. I'm a fourth year student here at Center for Indigenous Theater. Hi, I'm Teresa Cutknife, and I'm also a fourth year student at the Center for Indigenous Theater. Uh, we'll give you some tips and tricks on uh, how to do your monologues and get them sent into CIT. Yes, so first find an age appropriate monologue for yourself. Uh, use something from the Indigenous canon, uh, something like from Thompson Highway, Drew Hayden Taylor, uh, Kenneth T. Williams. Do you have any more? Keith Barker, Alanis King, and if you have any troubles finding anything like that, you could email CIT and we'll provide you with a monologue. So Sam, what did you do for your um, audition into CIT? I did uh, Ivic from Thunderstick by uh, Kenneth Williams. What about you? What did you do? I was sent a collection of different uh, story pieces from Coyote City. What to wear, uh, wear something simple, neutral colors, something that you're comfortable and confident in. Yep, and you know, it does, there's not really a time limit for it, but uh, it should be around three minutes. If you have any other skills that you wanna show, like singing, dancing, hand drumming, anything and everything, feel free to submit it, but you do have to have a monologue. Unless, of course, you're a storyteller and you have a story, uh, then you could submit that instead of the monologue, but no accents, please. And the most important thing is to have fun. And if you stumble, that's okay. Yep. You can do it over and over as many times as you feel. Have any other difficulties like doing your, your monologue or audition? Uh, probably the hardest part was memorizing it all. And uh, I had somebody film it for me. I did not know that it was best to film it with a neutral background, so I filmed it just in a living room and there was a lot of uh, things in the background, but it worked out. And you don't need a professional camera. Uh, we're doing this on an iPhone 10. You can stack it up on some books or put it on a table, whatever you gotta do. As long as it's capturing basically from half of your torso up so we can see your shoulders and your head, you can have a, a relative or somebody hold the camera for you and you can just send that into CIT. Have fun. Some ongoing requirements to remain in the program are that you must be on time and present for all classes, and you must be actively looking for funding while you attend your studies. Tuition costs each year are $3,750. If you are unable to receive band funding, there are organizations you can submit applications to for funding. These include, but are not limited to, Inspire Foundation, Métis Nation of Ontario, Canada Post, Mississaugas of the Credit, and other local organizations. If you are in need of funding assistance, contact us at the Centre for Indigenous Theatre. No student is ever turned away due to lack of funding. Please don't forget to follow us on Instagram and Twitter and like us on Facebook. We would like to thank our funders. With their generous support, we are able to provide a school for our students. We thank the Department of Canadian Heritage, the Ontario Arts Council, the Toronto Arts Council, Misway Beak Aboriginal Employment and Training, BMO Financial Group, Hastings Park Foundation of Rights and Freedoms, and Ontario Arts Foundation.
and thank you for attending our program info session. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section below. Thank you, and we look forward to seeing you soon.